But we're going to get started here this morning, and I'm going to try to remember how we do this because it's been well documented, but I do forget. So, <laughs> as everyone knows, the preacher made an issue about that Wednesday night. So, anyway, we want to welcome you here to Old Shalette Baptist Church. Anybody visiting for the very first time? Barbara last night and says she's about the same. Uh, she's still weak, uh, still don't have an appetite, and they still have her in ICU, I believe. Nothing changed since yesterday. But be much in prayer for her. Uh, this is her second uh, time in the hospital. Uh, she's not been well. She's still on oxygen, a high flow oxygen right now at this time. Then also Rick McGee, he has made it home, had to cover. So be much in prayer for Rick as he recovers. Uh, let me go ahead and give you an update on my dad. He is negative on COVID. They moved him off of that floor. And so that is a blessing and an answer to prayer. However, they saw something in the x-rays on the bottom of his lung. 
and went to do an biopsy to check it out and his lung collapsed. And so he has a tube uh, feeding into his lung. He has an erratic heartbeat and they're watching and monitoring that. So even though the COVID is no longer an issue, he still has a lot of health issues. Be much in prayer for him. His name is Paul Richardson. Susie's doing wonderful. She's still weak. Her blood pressure stays low a lot. Then it will jump back up. But she is doing a lot better, a little bit stronger than she was. And so be much in prayer for her. She continues her recovery. Thank you. Any other prayers? <clears throat> Uh, Brian Hall, um, also Cindy Hens um, from Lake Walker Mall. She's got a couple uh, friends that's um, that's passed away due to COVID right here recently. So. Thank you. Uh, yes, I want to just say thank you to everyone uh, during my illness. Everybody's been so good and so kind. And I'm thankful today to be here. Went through a whole lot back in uh, December. And, um, but God is faithful. And he's brought me back to my church and brought me back to my health. And he continues to strengthen me every day. And uh, I just really appreciate y'all. I love you all, everybody. Thank you. There's a five-month-old baby up in Chapel Hill Children's Hospital. Uh, she's waiting on the heart for a transplant. Uh, she's hooked up to a machine now that's keeping her blood pumping. But uh, if y'all would just remember her in prayer that she'll get that heart. Pray for the mom and dad. You'll strengthen them as well. Her name's Elena. All right. Yes, ma'am. If not, we want to um, to honor the request of having a special crew this morning for BJ, and we want to include whoever. So anyone will come down to the altar. We're going to have a special prayer this morning. If you will come on down, you want to remember BJ. Uh, certainly got to include Jeff for that, and um, Brother Paul. Uh, others that have been mentioned this morning, and. Um, let me see. Uh, Brother Barry, would you, when everybody gets up here, would you leave us in this prayer? Please? Our 
our most gracious Heavenly Father. God, we do know that you're in control of this whole world, God. We know that everybody is in your hand, God. And Lord, we just uh, lift up BJ this morning and Jeff, Lord, and, and every name it was mentioned here this morning, but just a special touch for BJ. Our church misses her so much, dear Lord, as we know that you know everything that's going on, God. But we're just going to ask you this morning to just give her that special touch, Lord. Give her that extra little breath of air. Just everything that you can do, God, that you just touch her in some way. Be with the doctors, nurses, each and every person that's, that's in contact with her, Lord. Be with her sister. If she, if she worries about her also, Lord God. Be with our church, Lord. If we just, just pray in the bond of our heart that you'll just get her well, Lord. We just so many that we've lost, so many things that's happened in this world today, God. And we do understand and know that you're in control. We know that you've got everything under where you want it, Lord God. And we just, just lift this up to you this morning. And we know that, uh, that you can and are able. And we just pray that it's in your will to touch her this morning. Get her back on her feet and back to her church family that miss her so much, Lord God. Just love you and praise you for all these things and all this. We do pray in that most wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, when you get back to your seats, don't even sit down. We're going to stand and sing, okay? Power in the blood, 132 in the booth if you need it. Lord, we're to follow Jesus Christ, and that's what we're here for. To hear the word 
the message that you speak to Master Roy and that we take them to heart and mind and do your service for the ones that are lost and unsaved. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to reach back and pull out an old song, Stuart Hamlin song, one entitled, Until Then. <clears throat> My heart can sing when I pause to remember a heartache here. Oh, 
soul of man. tomorrow is in the pastor's message we're gonna sing about love okay <laughs> and this is one you've heard us do maybe once or twice before love will roll the clouds away road you go clouds may hide the light of day but have no fear for friend you know that love will roll the clouds away love will roll Today. I'm so glad, I'm so glad I now can say Love will roll the clouds away God is watching over all And He hears each time we pray so lift your voice so and a happy song. Or love roll every day. Yes, love will roll those songs. Amen. Yes, ma'am.
made me appreciate it. Hey, uh, we opened up last Wednesday on this scripture. Uh, that was part one. Today will be part two of the same scripture. Uh, we covered verses one through six. We'll be going over verses seven through ten today. And we'll get to the scripture in just a few moments. Uh, let us begin in prayer as we consider the marriage supper of the Lamb. Uh, once again, we have some folks in our fellowship hall. We want to welcome them as well. Uh, sometimes uh, we may not realize that there are some folks in the fellowship hall. And then we have a host of folks, our family and friends that are watching us on Facebook Live. We want to welcome you today to our service. Let's all pray. Heavenly Father, we do ask your blessings upon the reading of your holy and precious word upon the message of this hour. May you be glorified and honored and may the church be edified, built up, and may we all uh, glorify you in all that will take place today. We love the music. We love the voices. We love the singing. Uh, we love the prayers. We love the tithes and offerings. We love every aspect of worship. And now as we turn our attention into your holy and precious word and this message, give us what we need to help us in our daily walk. It is in the name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. So today we're going to talk about marriage. Amen. Now, a few of us in this room know what marriage is all about. And I believe the reason a lot of couples experience pain in their marriage is because they spend a lot of time planning the wedding but very little time planning the marriage. They spend all that time planning how the wedding is to go. And yet they spend very little time on how they believe the marriage ought to go. See, there's a lot of important things they need to discuss before they get married. And some of the things are, it may be trivial what we mentioned today, but it's a big deal. One of the things that a lot of couples fail to plan out is where to attend church. She may be a member of one church, he may be a member of another church, and it doesn't never even darken on them which church are we going to go to once we get married. She's still thinking, we're going to my church. He's still thinking, no, we're going to my church. And they never discuss this until they get married. Some may be of one denomination, another might be of another denomination. And that's a big deal. She's thinking he's going to join with me and he's thinking, no, she'll join with me. And there are some marriages today where one spouse goes to one church, another spouse goes to another church. And that might be fine for them. But I believe it's always best if you can worship the Lord together in one church. Some of the things people fail to mention as they are planning the wedding but fail to plan the marriage is how many children do we want? I counseled a couple one time, and I got on the subject of children, and I asked, how many children would y'all like to have? And the man said, I want a dozen. The woman said, I don't want any. And they looked at each other. They had never even discussed it until that very moment. And it surprised both of them with their answers. And so there's some real questions that need to be asked some real planning that needs to take place before couples come together. Another question on the planning is, who's going to take care of making sure the bills are paid? And who's going to watch how much money we spend? And they, they fail to make these plans and one might work a job and the other might work another job and, and then are we going to consolidate our funds? Are we going to keep different accounts? Are we going to move into one account? And so these things need to be worked out. We need to plan the marriage. And on and on we could go, but you get the picture. I'm reminded of a story told many years ago of an older couple who was celebrating their 75th wedding anniversary, the diamond wedding anniversary. And it made big news in the local area because nobody had ever made it the 75 years of marriage as far as they could remember. And as if that wasn't extraordinary enough, there was something else that stood out about this couple. In all their 75 years of marriage, they had never had an argument. Not one argument in all 75 years. The local news got wind of this and they said, there's a story right there. We need to find out more about this. And, and so they sent one of their news reporters to the home of the couple to find out how come they've never had an argument 
in 75 years of marriage. So he knocks on the door, he introduces himself, and said, I'm here to do a story. And it's an amazing story of 75 years of marriage together, but what we're interested in, more than that, is how you have never had an argument in all these 75 years. Sir, ma'am, 75 years of marriage is amazing. But how is it you have never had not even one argument in all this five years? And so the elderly gentleman, the husband speaks up and says, Sonny, it all began on our honeymoon. Right after our marriage, 75 years ago, we went to the Grand Canyon for our honeymoon. And back in those days, you could rent mules, pack mules, and they would lead you down into uh, the bottom of the canyon. Well, sir, on the way down, my, mule, my wife's mule stumbled and like to fell over the cliff. She grabbed that mule by the ear and turned him around and looked him straight in the eyes and said, that's one. Well, we went a little bit farther and after a while, the mule stumbled again and like to fell off the cliff. My wife grabbed that mule's ear and turned him around and looked him straight in the eye and said, that's two. A little while, Father, that mule stumbled a third time. My wife jumped down, pulled her pistol out, looked that mule straight in the eye, pointed that pistol and shot him dead. I looked at her in shock. And I said, what do you think you're doing? She comes over to me, pulls me by the ear and says, that's one. <laughs> well, sir, I'm a quick learner. And believe me when I said we've never had an argument since that time. So wives, next time your husband does something that annoys you, just look at him and say, that's one. <laughs> He'll get the picture. Amen. He'll straighten up. Now, last Wednesday night, we had an awesome time, didn't we? Yes. We had a group over here that ever so often would shout out, Hallelujah! Then we had another group over here that shouted out, Amen! And all of those at home was typing out, Hallelujah! And Amen! All the way through the service. And so we were talking about the marriage supper of the Lamb. We were leading up to that. And there was a celebration going on of people getting in touch with God. Okay. <laughs> and so, what a wonderful time we had. Let's look at verses 1 through 6 once again as we get into this wonderful marriage supper. 1 through 6. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he have judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his service at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God and sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice come out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude. And as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. And so we had a wonderful time discussing those verses about the hallelujahs and about the amens. And it was leading up unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. So now let us read verses 7 through 10. Listen to what it says. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife have made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I felt at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant. 
and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You know, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. And many people celebrate this day in association with love and affection to other people. It could be to let those special people in our lives know just how much they mean to us. And it could be a spouse. It could be a girlfriend, a boyfriend. It could be a parent. It could be a child. It could be a friend. Sometimes we give cards. Sometimes we give chocolates. Sometimes we give flowers. Sometimes uh, we give candy. Sometimes we go out and eat to commemorate that special time in our lives. Sometimes we get a getaway. And we, we do a few days off just to celebrate with one another. And for many people, that is the day they end up being engaged. As the man pops the question to the woman on Valentine's Day. Others have set Valentine's Day as the very day of their marriage. As they come together, whether it's that particular day or any other day of the year, weddings can be pretty extravagant. Think about it. <coughs> Thousands and thousands of dollars are spent on weddings as people come together. And can there be anything any more warming than watching two people come together in front of their family, in front of their friends, and devote their lives to each other? Think about it. When they come together, can you see it? Can you hear it? The music starts playing. Da, da. Da, 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 da. Back then the doors open up. The people stand and turn around. And the bride stands there in all her beauty. And every eye in the place is on the bride. <clears throat> every eye that is is at the groom's mother. She's still looking at the groom. He's, he's only got the mother looking at him. All other eyes are looking at the bride. And then she, walk, she starts to walk down and she's very nervous. And she's holding on to the arm as custom that takes uh, most of the time is her father. As he brings her down and places her into the hand of the groom. Now think about this. The groom doesn't receive any attention. It's the bride all the way through that receives the attention. And you know what? If that was to happen down here and, and uh, we think about the bride is receiving all that attention, and that's rightfully so. But then the preacher, he says a few words. The, the couple, they say a few vows to one another. Uh, there's a song or two played. There's a prayer made. And then the wedding is over and someone undoubtedly will say, that was a marriage made in heaven. While that may be true, for some people, they still have to live it down on this earth below. And that tends to make a marriage less than perfect. In our scripture, we find that there truly is a marriage taking place in heaven. It was made in heaven. It is the marriage of the Lamb. Look at verses 7 and 8 once again. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to Him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife have made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And so there's a proclamation made. John the Revelator, he hears this proclamation. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to, not her, to him give honor to him for the marriage of the bride no it doesn't say the bride the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife have made herself ready we see that while many marriages take place on this earth the focus is on the bride in this marriage that is made in heaven the focus is on the groom jesus christ he is the groom he receives the honor and the glory. And we are told to rejoice and be glad for him. His marriage has come. 
And this is the moment, the consummation between the bride and the groom coming together. Now, the bride, the wife is none other than the church. That's you and me. That is the New Testament church. And we will at last come together in person and be with one another. You know, since the day of our salvation, since the day we come to Jesus and ask him to forgive us of our sins, to move into our hearts and save us, we have been living with Jesus in our hearts. And it's a wonderful thing. But on this day, the marriage supper of the Lamb, we will be with Jesus in person. We will experience his presence. Oh, what joy. The reason this great multitude is so filled with praise is because now the time has come where the Lamb of God is joined to his people. It's a union so close. It can only be imagined by comparing the marriage of a man and the woman. The phrase, his wife have made herself ready, refers to the judgment seat of Christ, and we covered it in detail Wednesday night. We're not going to go over all the verses and everything that that pertains to. But in the judgment seat of Christ, it's where we will give account of every action, every word we've ever spoken since the day of our salvation. Everything before salvation is wiped clean, never to be remembered ever again. But since the day of salvation, there's a record being kept of every word, every action. And we will be given crowns and awards. Some of us might receive reprimands because we didn't do as we probably should have done. But when it's all said and done, we will receive our robes of righteousness. And this is how we make ourselves ready. There is much for us to do. But it is ultimately the work of God in us. Listen to what Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 through 27 says. Ephesians 5, 25 through 27. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. To be clean indicates purity. To be clean indicates loyalty and faithfulness from a child of God. But then let's look at verse 9, back in Revelation 19. Revelation 19, verse 9. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And so an announcement is given to John to write. Write out. Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. You know, this is speaking about those who are invited to the wedding, to the marriage. This is speaking about those who will be in attendance. And we wonder, just who will these be that are in attendance? Well, it's not Jesus. He's the groom. It's not the church. We're the bride. It's not the angelic beings. They're ministering spirits to the heirs of salvation. There's a hint given to us back in John 3, verse 29. Listen to what it says. John 3, 29. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly, because the bridegroom's voice, this my joy therefore is fulfilled. The guests, those in attendance to the marriage supper of the Lamb, Jesus is the groom, the church is the bride, the angels are ministering spirits. So who are the guests? It's the Old Testament saints and the tribulation saints. There are guests who are invited to the marriage of the Lamb. It will be a group made up of Jewish folks and Gentile folks who trusted in God and died before Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. And then those in the tribulation saved after the rapture and during the tribulation. That is who makes up the guest list. 
Now, just think, think about those who will be on this list. Think about some of the names. Abraham, Moses, Daniel, David, John the Baptist, and on and on the list goes. And the Lord Jesus will marry his bride, the New Testament church, and those who are saved during the age of grace. Now, think about this for just a moment. Jewish weddings began with a betrothal or an engagement period. It was legally binding. Just as Mary and Joseph had not consummated the marriage, but it was a legally binding marriage. And when Joseph thought Mary had cheated on him, she, he was willing to put her away privately because he didn't want no harm to come to her. And so you could either be divorced or the marriage could end by death. But just as soon as the engagement took place, you were as good as legally married. Even though the couple didn't live together, possibly up to a year or two years, even though they didn't live together, they were not in each other's presence, they were nonetheless considered married. The marriage also, in many of the Jewish marriage cases, were put together by the parents. The parents arranged the marriage in most cases. Many times a, a, a father would pick out a girl for his son or maybe the parents of the daughter would look out for a suitable husband for their daughter. And so they would pick them out and not necessarily, folks didn't necessarily marry for love, but they loved who they married. Did you hear what I just said? They didn't marry for love, but they loved who they married. Many folks can learn a lesson from this today, huh? So many people get together today and say they love one another. You ask just about everyone that wants to get married, why do you want to get married? Because I love them. Because I love them. Because I love them. But then what happens years down the road when they end up down the divorce path? What happens? Many people forget about those vows they made in sickness and in health. I tell you, people are to be commended today. Many husbands who stick by their wives through years of sickness. Many wives who stick by their husbands in years of sickness. They are to be commended highly for their stick to to their spouse in sickness and in health. How about for richer, for poorer? Many times when a couple gets together, both of them is doing well. But circumstances change and maybe an accident happens or, or maybe a, a, the husband loses his job or, or for whatever circumstance, they are now struggling to make ends meet. You see, for richer, for poorer. Or how about for better, for worse? You know, we never know what the circumstances of life are going to throw on us. And think about this now. We're not going to stay the same. Through the years, some of the women are going to pick up a little weight, maybe. And not saying you have, just saying possible. Some of the men are going to develop a pop belly or maybe a bald head. You, know, you, you never know what's going to happen in the years. Uh, we think about, hey, if you want a good gauge of what your wife's going to look like in 20 or 30 years, look at her mother. That's a pretty good gauge. Not all cases, but most of the time, a, a daughter will end up looking like the wife or the mother and, and the, the, the husband, we end up looking like his father. You know, speaking of for better or for worse, a wife and a husband were sitting in the living room. He was watching a little television and he wore glasses. And, you know, he didn't have to have glasses when he was young, but I had to have glasses. And, but he didn't have them on, he had them on top of his head. And she looked over at him and her heart was just beating the flood. She looks over and says, you know, darling, you still look good without your glasses on. He looked back at her and said, you know, you still look pretty good without my glasses on, too. <laughs> I don't know if he got in the doghouse or not, but that was a pretty rough answer, amen. But grab hold of this now when we think about the betrothal period. You and I, are, as the bride of Christ, we are right in the middle of our betrothal. We're right in the middle of our engagement period. We have been picked by the Heavenly Father as He so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so we've been married to Jesus ever since the day we said I do to salvation. When we ask Jesus to come into our hearts, we're not with him in person, but we will be one day. But right now, we're just as much married as we ever could be because we said I do to the Savior. He lives in our hearts. But then concerning the Jewish weddings, there comes a time, or the Jewish marriage, there comes a time when the groom will pay a dowry for the bride. Don't you know that Jesus Christ paid our dowry on the cross of Calvary? Amen. He paid our sin debt. What was owed, he paid willingly. He sacrificed himself for your sin and, and your sin and my sin. That's just the kind of Jesus we have. But then there comes the procession when the father of the groom would send his son to go after the bride and bring her back home to live in their home. That was what was meant when Jesus said, In my father's house are many mansions. When the Jewish son would get engaged, they would build a house, on, on another room onto the father's house and bring the wife back in. Now think about this. There's coming a time when the father in heaven is going to look to his son Jesus and say, Son, it's time. It's time to go get your bride and go bring her back home to live with us forever. And it's that great event we know as the rapture when Jesus will come out, children come forth and will rise up to meet him in the air. And the Bible says, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. amen. Now, somebody can say hallelujah there and others can say amen there. Amen. 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 And then there's the festival. There's the following of the wedding, the, the great time of celebration with family and friends. And they would enter into it many times. It would last for days. Most of the time, seven days. May I remind you, church, that for seven years, we're going to be rejoicing up in heaven while tribulation is taking place on this earth down below. We're going to be enjoying uh, through the first part the judgment seat of Christ and then the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then what a honeymoon for we'll celebrate for 1,000 years back on this earth ruling and reigning with Christ. Amen. It's going to be a hallelujah time. What a marriage to look forward to. Amen. But then look in verse 10. Revelation 19 verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You know, worship belongs only to God. But John got so caught up in what he was seeing and what he was hearing, he fell down to worship the angel. And the angel very quickly corrected him. Say, get up. I am a fellow servant along with you. Now, angels and men all serve God. We have our different capacities, but we all serve God. Amen. And then this is what he says. See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Do you have the testimony of Jesus upon you that worship God? For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You see, the angel bore witness of his resurrection just like John did. The angel bears witness of Jesus' glory in heaven just like John is now doing. And the angel bears witness of Jesus coming for his bride and being married just like John is now seeing and hearing what has taken place. They both bore that testimony. Church, are you ready? For a true marriage that is made in heaven. It is the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now let me ask you this. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, where does that put you? I don't see you among the guests there. You're not part of the bride because you never accepted Jesus. So what does that leave for you? You see, only the redeemed those who have trusted in Christ are accounted as the bride and will be taken out of here in that event known as the rapture. 
Or have you ever put your trust in Jesus? Have you ever asked him to come into your heart, forgive you of your sin, and save your soul? If not, then why not do it today? Why not become a part of the bride of Christ? So how do I do that? I simply say an I do to Jesus. Accept his love, accept his salvation. Just like when a husband and a wife say those vows, and they say those two words, I do. Why don't you come and say, I do, to Jesus today? And begin your marriage with the one who has saved your soul from Mount Calvary. As he took your place, he paid your sin debt. Come into the family today. Become a bride of Christ by accepting his salvation, would you? Every head bowed, every eye closed. No one looking around. Our Heavenly Father, as we have been through this scripture today, and what a wonderful scripture, the marriage supper of the Lamb. I pray, Lord, that everyone here and everyone watching has accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior. But if by chance they have not, Lord, would you give them another opportunity today? Listen, whether you're here in the sanctuary or the fellowship hall or watching us on Facebook Live, would you accept Jesus? Would you ask him into your heart to save your soul? Would you bow down and pray that Jesus will forgive you of your sins? Anyone, anywhere. If you're here today and you want to accept Jesus, simply raise your hand. No one's looking. Every eye is closed. Would you want to accept Jesus today? Anyone, anywhere. Those of you at home or wherever you may be, you may be watching through the hospital. I pray if you're watching today, if Jesus has touched your heart, you've never accepted him, that you would bow your head and you would pray a prayer. Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I'm in need of a Savior. I acknowledge my sin before you. I ask you to come into my heart, forgive me of my sin, and save my soul. I believe that you are the Son of God, that you came to this earth wrapped in a body of flesh and bone and blood, that you grew into a man who died upon the cross of Calvary for my sin, took my place. And three days later, you raised up from the dead, victorious over death, hell in the grave and now you've ascended back up to the heavenly father forgive me of my sin accept me into the family to your salvation I say I do listen if you pray the prayer to ask Jesus to your heart to save your soul the holy word of God is promised that is exactly what will happen I pray you've prayed that prayer. If you have, let us know. We'd love to continue praying for you. As we now extend this invitation to an altar call, there may be some you know about who are still lost. There may be some who are going through burdens or struggles and you would like to come and pray on their behalf. You may have a burden or a struggle. Would you come? Let's all stand. Where'd you come?
All right, all hearts and minds clear. We appreciate you being here today. May God continue to bless you all this week. And we just love each and every one of you. God bless you. Keep praying for those who are still struggling. Our sister BJ, my dad, Paul Richardson, Rick, as he recovers at home. Be much in prayer for him. Susie, she's recovering. And many others. Miss C, what a testimony she is being here with us today. Mm-hmm. So we want to continue to remember her. Anything you want to say? Amen. Amen. Do you want to mention anything else? Good. I'm talking to you. <laughs> well, I didn't mention it because many this morning, but I am going in in the morning for a procedure. They're going to have to change my pacemaker out. It's been there for three months, they said. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I just covered your prayers. Amen. It is good to be in God's house. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. All hearts and minds clear? Yes, it is. Good to see you, Brent. God bless you. My brother Cal, would you close us in prayer?